Good morning and welcome to Market Monday, a bi-weekly update on what's going on with markets in the economy delivered by the investment team in the trust department at the First National Bank of Mount Dora. We're going to start with Friday's market action because it was pretty significant. Dropped about 5% and that's most likely in relation to some very hawkish commentary that came from the Fed chairman from Jackson Hole at around 10 in the morning. And when we say hawkish, what we mean is uh, the Fed indicating that they're going to do whatever it takes in terms of raising interest rates to bring in sky high inflation that we've been seeing under control. That means they're going to be very aggressive, much more aggressive than the market was expecting. And as a result, uh, equity prices get written down. They're expecting higher interest rates to cause more of a contraction in corporate profits and potentially, we think, the economy as well. With that said, the longer term outlook on markets is actually pretty strong. And we think that the economic data that's been coming in is actually pretty consistent with us already being in a recession and that it's only a matter of time before there's an official declaration that in fact this is what we've been going through. And historically, in almost every case, by the time a recession is declared, the markets have actually already bottomed and turned up. And what we're seeing here when we look at this chart of the S&P 500 on your screen is pretty clear evidence that the markets have begun a bottoming process. And it's probably going to last for some time as the data continues to come in. And in tandem with equity markets, we also like to look at the interest rate situation. And in this case, here's a yield curve in corporate high quality bonds. At the beginning of the year, one year paper was yielding about a half a percent. Now it's yielding about three and a half percent. This is actually great news for income investors because now you can start earning on your uh, bond positions. And in fact, if you have a portfolio of bonds that goes out 10 years, you're probably getting somewhere around three and three quarters to 3.8% as an average yield. That's very, very good considering recent history. And when I say recent, I mean even over the past 10, 15 years. That's a good rate. So that's encouraging. And that's a sign that, you know, eventually inflation is likely to be brought under control because this corporate bond rate uh, curve represents the cost of capital to high quality companies. And as these costs go up, you know, a lot of the projects that were coming out that were being funded and a lot of the demand that was there uh, tapers off and only the really good opportunities are selected as businesses go forward and decide what projects to take. So that's good. Going into economic data that's coming, this week, today, we get the Dallas Fed at 1030, which tells us what's going on in the manufacturing world, and that, that's giving us a snapshot into the economy. We get tomorrow Consumer Confidence Index, and that's probably the most important report of the week because the consumer represents two-thirds of our GDP growth, and whatever the consumer is doing is going to be based on their confidence. So if the consumer is not feeling confident, they're more likely to stop spending as much, and therefore you see more of a contraction in the economy. We'll be watching that one closely for any evidence of what's going on. Is it more recessionary than expected? Or conversely, is it much stronger than expected, which indicates that the Fed is going to have to be more aggressive because the economy is still running way too hot. Moving into the week later, we get the uh, mortgage applications, which is a pretty important read on what's happening in the housing market, and more importantly, the Chicago PMI, which is the Purchasing Managers Index. In the same way that the Consumer Confidence Index gave us a glimpse of what the consumer is thinking, the Chicago PMI tells us what producers are thinking. We get initial claims and we get productivity. Initial claims for unemployment. I want to come back to this one and we're actually going to look at this one right now because one of the things that Washington and the Fed have been telling us is this economy is not in recession. It's very strong. The labor market is very, very strong. And they're basing that on the new jobs created, the non-farm payroll numbers that have indeed been coming in very strong. But those job creation numbers are lagging. And that's because when com companies decide to add staff, that's generally a quarter or maybe even more of a process, several months at least, from the decision to hire to the actual hire and onboarding of someone. Whereas when people are laid off, that's a quick response to changing economic conditions that are decaying. And here, when we look at initial claims for unemployment, since March, they're up about 50%. And that's a rapidity and magnitude that are both consistent with a very, very much weakening labor market not one that's strengthening. 
So we would argue that the job market actually looks like it's weakening, not strengthening and not strong. Um, and, and therefore, the Fed's argument that the economy is stronger uh, maybe lacks some merit and maybe is worth watching. As we look in, construction spending, that's an important indicator. In the manufacturing index, this is another index that's similar to the one we're receiving today. It'll be just a slightly different survey. And then on Friday, we get the non-farm payrolls, how many jobs are actually added, what's the unemployment rate, factory orders, durable goods orders. And this is another really important one because people are only buying big ticket items when they have confidence in the economy. So if that actually comes out slowing instead of the 0.3% you know, or the 0% growth that they show, it, that's recessionary as an indicator. Alternatively, if it's growing, that's an inflationary indicator. So as you can tell, the water's pretty muddy. Over the longer term though, which is always our viewpoint, you know, if we go out 20 years, the market doesn't look nearly as scary. And that's our point. Stay invested for the long haul. Pay attention to what's going on in the short term. And if you have questions about it, reach out to us here at the bank. We're here to talk. We hope you found this informative. Thank you and have a great day.